I installed a hidden camera in the house and caught my girlfriend cheating. Where the f do I even start? My girlfriend, 20, has been living with me, 21 male, and my family for the past two years. Been together for almost four. She got into a huge fight with her dad and decided to move out. My mom, being the kind person she's always been, offered to let her live with us. I agreed, of course. I mean, I loved her. Loved. Now, I've always been somewhat of a jealous type in a relationship, but not the crazy kind. The title suggests otherwise, I know, but it was the only way to the truth. My suspicions first arose about a year ago when I was playing this board game Code Names with my sister, 24, her boyfriend, 24, and the cheating Let's call her Stacy. Stacy and my sister's boyfriend were on a team together, and right away, I didn't like the energy they were giving off. She was laughing at all his jokes. He was teasing her about some It all just looked flirtatious to me, and I wasn't having any of that. That night, I talked to her about it, and she told me that it was nothing. Of course. During this time, I was going to school and had a job working as a cook, so I was out of the house most of the time. Some days, I wouldn't get home until midnight. My parents worked eight to four jobs, as well as my sister. My girlfriend only worked weekends, and she took her schooling online. My sister's boyfriend is in construction, but his schedule is two weeks on, two weeks off, most of the day. Stacy and my sister's boyfriend were home alone together. My suspicions only grew ever since that board game night. Every time they were in a room together, Stacy would barely look at him anymore. They'd make small talk here and there. I could tell the dynamic of the relationship changed. I confronted Stacy again, asked why all of a sudden she was acting so awkward around him, and she said it's because she doesn't want to upset me. At this point, I felt bad for making her feel guilty. I said I'd never bring it up again, and I kept my word. Until six days ago. I was lying down on the couch upstairs in the living room. Stacy was in the kitchen, which was half visible from where I was, making a smoothie. My sister's boyfriend comes downstairs and starts making lunch for himself. I couldn't see what they were doing, but I pretended not to care holding my phone to my face. I could barely see their figures in the back door's glass reflection. They were shifting around each other, trying to do their own thing, when all of a sudden, he slaps her ass. In that moment, I felt frozen. Every part of me flared up. After my sister's boyfriend went back upstairs, I got up from the couch, went to the front door, and put my shoes on. Stacy comes toward me and says, where are you going? And I just responded, really? I just saw what happened. And then I left and slammed the door behind me. She chased after me, getting all angry, trying to act as if nothing even happened. I told her what I saw, which just made her even more mad. A reflection? So you're saying that you didn't even see it then? You thought you saw it? You wanted to see it to justify your psycho thoughts. At this point, she's threatening to break up with me, saying she's going to move out and live on her own, making me feel guilty by saying she's broke, that she'll have to drop out of school and work full time at a job. As much as I wanted to just end all of it and let her go at this point, I apologized. I apologized for everything, begged her to stay, and promised to never, ever bring it up again. It took a lot of convincing, but eventually she decided to stay and we walked back to the house. But I knew what I saw. I just needed hard evidence. That same night, I ordered a tiny black hidden camera from Amazon. When it arrived, I set it up in the living room next to the kitchen, just at the corner of one of the curtains. The next morning, two days ago, when everyone was still asleep, I discreetly took out the chip put it in the USB, and quickly went through the footage on my laptop. Nothing. I cleared up the space and put the chip back in the camera. And then yesterday, I finally got what I wanted. I woke up before everyone else again and viewed the chip. Approximately at 3.15 a.m., I saw my sister's boyfriend slowly walk downstairs and sit on the couch. A few minutes later, Stacy walks upstairs from our room. She carefully walks over to him, sits on his lap, and I couldn't bear to watch anymore. I was in complete disbelief. The girl who I spent four years with, the girl who I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with, cheating on me with my sister's boyfriend, all this time, lying to my face, making me feel guilty. I went back downstairs, woke up Stacy, placed the laptop in front of her, and played the video. As soon as she realized what was happening, she instantly closed it and froze. Nothing was said for what felt like an eternity. She started sobbing, trying to utter words until I finally spoke up. You're the most conniving, disgusting sociopath I've ever met. Start packing your sh right now or I'm sending this to everyone you know. We're done. What followed was a very long, pathetic, sorry excuse for an apology that I don't even want to get into. Eventually she called her dad. He came by and picked her up, so I guess she's going to live with her family again. 
A lot of her things are still here, and she doesn't have any friends to deliver it to her, so I have no idea what to do with all this shit. As for my sister and her boyfriend, he's also been kicked out of the house, and now has his own place somewhere. Who knows, maybe Stacy might even move in with him. I don't care at this point. X slept with his co-worker, and six months later, I'm still at a loss for words. I don't know where to begin. We were dating for three and a half years, and back in January, he came home one day and told me that a mutual of ours has applied to his job, and I was excited because I knew her from a past job. He worked at a bagel shop with my mom, and I knew she would be good with keeping up with speed since we used to work at Panera together. Anyways, I hyped her up and was really excited for her to help out my mom, my ex, and their co-workers. I thought she was a genuine friend and didn't think twice. A few weeks of them working together, she added him on Facebook. I thought nothing of it, and he told me right off the bat that she added him and we both just didn't bring it up again. A few nights go by, and we were both watching TV. He mentions that she messaged him, hey, on Messenger. We both giggled and wondered what she wanted. Keep in mind, he was updating me on everything. So he messaged her back, a hello. A few hours pass, and boom. She sends him an entire paragraph going into depth about how much she liked him and has always liked him, even when me and her worked at Panera a couple years before. Let's just say I didn't take it lightly. I guess this is my own fault. I was always jealous and got really overwhelmed and messenger myself on my own account. I said it was f***ed up to try to take my boyfriend knowing our history and how long we've been together. She apologized and said she was drinking and didn't think about it and I said it was okay. My ex, boyfriend at the time, said he didn't respond. I asked him the next day to remove her from his Facebook and we can call it at that. We both went to work and I work later than him. He would get off at 3 and I would get off at 5. My job is really laid back so I play on my phone all the time. I noticed that both her and him were both logged on to Facebook at the same time when 3 o'clock came around. I refreshed his profile 15 minutes later and she was deleted. I thought it was over and that was the end. Boy was I wrong. So everything was back to normal for a bit, but one night my anxiety, depression got the best of me. We were drinking pretty heavily that night like usual and having fun playing video games. We went out for a smoke break and I told him I was really anxious about this girl. I told him how all I can see in my head is him going over to her place when they get off and sleeping with her. He broke down and started crying, telling me he would never even think about screwing me over that hard. I have worked my ass off since I was 16, full-time job, full-time student in college, public health major, and have had my own car for years. Meanwhile, this girl has two DUIs and barely makes it by. My ex was always the one to bring up marriage first and everything, so when he got upset, he really got upset. He told me if we ever broke up, he would be so sad and would do anything in the world to try to fix whatever happened. I genuinely believed him and was so relieved to calm down finally. Valentine's Day was coming up and he made reservations at our favorite restaurant and bought me a huge teddy. V-Day comes around and I felt like everything was going wrong. Our waitress didn't really seem to want to be there. The vibes were just so off. We came home and cuddled and watched a movie. We haven't had sex at that point in a little while, so I was expecting a little something, but nothing happened. I didn't mind it, you know. When you've been with someone for so long, it really doesn't matter at that point. Once again, another couple days go by, and at this point, my ex is just not himself at all. He stayed up really late and skipped class, and I told him it was unacceptable to skip class. He already did it twice, and it was only the first month and a half of school. He told me he wanted to talk and said I was really overwhelming to be with. He said he hasn't been feeling us for months, even though this asshole just cried over us breaking up a few days before and was just acting like a whole new person. I got really sad and called a friend and we drove to the beach so I could get some space after the talk. We didn't break up, but I wanted to get away ASAP. I came home an hour or so later ready to figure out our problems. He grabbed his keys and said he was going to the bar. I wanted to go with him in hopes that a few drinks would help us communicate. He told me not to go and then he wanted to go alone. So I stayed home and cried until 2 a.m. He stumbled in the door drunk as hell, he drove by the way, and slept on the couch. The next morning, I asked him what the heck was up and if he wanted to be single, he needed to just tell me instead of ignoring me. He said he did want to be single and I called it quits right then and there. I called my best friend and asked her to come help me pack. We lived in a two bedroom townhouse with two dogs. I asked him to leave while she was over so I could talk to her. He leaves and that was that. She came over and helped a bit and listened to me rant. Then I get a text from him. He texts me at least five times saying he can't lose me and he doesn't understand what's going on in his mind. His family has a history of bipolar or schizophrenia. 
I tell him to come back ASAP and we will make it okay again. He was the love of my life. I would have done anything for him. So my friend left and he drove home and immediately scooped me in his arms and cried. He kissed me and said how sorry he was and how badly he wanted things to go back to normal. I didn't know what he meant by that. He asked me to lay in his arms on the couch and we start watching a show. 30 minutes pass and he stands up and goes to the bathroom. He was in there for a while, but I didn't think about it. But then I got a text. The coworker tells me everything. He slept with her three times during those two weeks since everything started. When he went to the bar, he actually just got drunk with her and slept with her and drove home. I was shocked. I ran and started slamming on the bathroom door, screaming that he is a cheater. He comes out looking so sad and said he never meant it to get that far. BS. He said he would have his phone shut off or he would give me his phone every day when I left for work and I actually considered it for a moment. But then I looked out into the backyard and I swear God had sent me a sign and said, no, you need to end it. So I told him to leave and I would be moved out in two weeks. He instantly ran back to her and once again lied about it. He texted me out the blue that he is staying with a friend until I moved out to give me space. But now I found out really fast that he was staying with her. Once I moved out, he moved the girl into our house. She posted her apartment online for a sublease. Another month passes and it's on Facebook that they are now in a relationship. It's been six months now since the breakup. I think about it a lot, but I'm doing a lot better. I went to therapy, got all A's, did summer school so I could finish faster, bought myself a new car in cash. I'm moving on my own. I've tried to date again, but I really just can't fall for anyone else without thinking of my ex the whole time. I'm healing on my own no matter how long it takes. I just hope one day I can wake up and not think of him and I can finally get my peace back. I don't want to go to my cheating sister's wedding. My brother-in-law found out my sister has been cheating on him for eight years, two years ago. Three kids together. Her boyfriend was married with two kids. My brother-in-law found old phones with old text messages that confirmed his suspicions. My sister worked with this man she was cheating with for eight years. Went to company parties together, same work social circles. My sister and her husband even met up socially with her cheating partner and his wife. All the times she was working late, working on Sundays and asking me, my other siblings and my parents to watch the kids were not to help her with her job, but to help her cheat. Her youngest was born during the affair. Even had my other sister take a picture of her in the NICU with the baby, which we found out was to send to her boyfriend. DNA test confirmed it was my brother-in-law's baby. Looking back, everything we thought was true all these years wasn't. It's heartbreaking. They destroyed not only their own families, but broke the hearts of my parents and her in-laws. My parents were devastated to learn their daughter was capable of this. They were depressed and still are to a degree this day. My father will never be the same. He says he will go to his grave with a broken heart for her part in this. He can't believe his own daughter would do this. Anyway, two years later still dealing with this show. Nasty divorce, custody issues, financial issues, lots of money involved. She is now living with him and getting married next month. Asked my parents for their blessing. Ha! My father said, you did what you wanted all these years without my blessing, now you want it? You're not getting anything. I want nothing to do with this wedding, but I feel bad for her children. I also have two daughters who do know what happened, 15 and 13. I feel like I am setting a bad example to go celebrate this with them. Her kids have not put the pieces together and don't realize what really went down. I don't acknowledge him or their relationship.